Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. Tatenda Sawana is a Harare-based self-styled prophet. He believes that the biblical gifts of the Holy Spirit did not cease with the apostles and are operating today for the edification of the church. I'm a prophet by birth, but as I grew, I discovered through certain visitations, when God visited me, he began to tell me who I was. Born 24 years ago, Sawana says he grew up amid poverty and degradation. After the death of his father in 2006, Tatenda had to work in a salt factory to earn a living. This experience, he says, made him a strong person and strengthened his faith in God. It did not take long before he began to experience deeply spiritual visions and dreams. In one of the visions, Sawana says he was taken into both hell and heaven and had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus in paradise. In another vision, which he says marked his call to the prophetic office, Sawana says he heard a clear voice from God asking him to deliver people from the shackles of the devil. His mother says Tatenda was undoubtedly born a prophet. She received a prophecy while carrying his pregnancy. <laughs> Tatenda's ministry and desire to serve God is only fulfillment of this prophecy. Whether his story is believable or not is up to you to decide, but it is definitely one of the many stranger than fiction stories that have found credence in the history of the church in Zimbabwe. It also shows us that there may be a supernatural dimension, a world beyond the one we know. The following is his remarkable story.
I saw the old, the young, and I saw people, thousands upon thousands of people that were there, they were sick. They were battered, they were in pain. And some of them were, were, were in chains and being treated as slaves. And in that vision, I heard an audible voice. And that voice was the voice of God. It had, it had authority in it. And behind that voice, there were like the rushing of many waters. And I heard the voice saying, I have sent you as a prophet. Go and deliver my people from the afflictions, the sicknesses, and the oppressions of the devil. And immediately when I saw, when I heard that voice, I began to see myself personally getting into that place, walking into that place, praying for people, delivering people in that land. And chains were breaking. And after they were delivered, the Lord spoke to me and he said, now that you have delivered them, you have another assignment to make sure that they come out from this place of bondage take them to a place of abundance and I began to see myself leading those thousands of people into a place that was like a paddock, it had green lawn, it had flowing rivers and the Lord said that is your assignment, deliver people and take them from a place of troubles to a place of abundance because I saw somebody divorcing and I saw that somebody coming to you it's true. And from that time, my life changed. I remember at school, I studied at one of uh, the colleges in town. I remember I would get into class and people would begin to manifest. Tatenda Chikura, Tolunge, 2014. Chikuru. I remember I would preach at Scripture Union, demons would begin to cry out up until even teachers at that college began to come privately for prophecy and deliverance. From that time up to now, the Lord has been doing great things. Jasharamuangari. <laughs> Hallelujah. That place, there 
was a place, there was like a farm, and in that farm there was a prayer room where we could spend three days, three nights fasting and praying and seeking the face of God. I remember it was in the second day of, of my absolute fast, and I knelt down in the night around 11 p.m., kneeling down, crying out. I had a passion to make a change, to make an impact in this world. And I remember I was taken into a deep vision that I can call a, an open vision. And in that vision, I saw the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I saw him, there were tears that were coming out of his face. And I remember looking at his face, there was love and compassion right in his eyes. But the problem, he was dropping tears. He was holding a white lining um, tower that was very wide and the tears were dropping and turning into blood. And immediately I began to ask myself, why are you crying, Lord? And he said to me, come and see why I am weeping for this generation. And immediately in the spirit, I was transported to another place. And in that place, there was like a big stadium. I saw young people, old people, walking slowly in the queue, walking slowly. And he said to me, look at where they are going. And I lifted my eyes in that vision. I saw where they were walking towards. I saw a big gate. That big gate was written in capital letters and with the blood. was written welcome to hell and in that place I could hear people crying I would hear all sorts of noise people were crying and you could smell the smell of bright meat from a distance and there was fire in that place and he said to me I came and I died so that these people can be saved from the wrath of hell. But look at them, they have denied my salvation and that's where they are going. And he said to me, son, take heed to my instruction. Go to the world, teach them, show them that I came to save them. And whosoever believes in me shall not perish but have eternal life. It's the time you begin to let God in your life. The time the head of people leaves you is the time the head of God will locate you. Go today and preach to them and save them from the red to come. That was an encounter that gave me passion to go into wherever the parts of the world. I've been to India, I've to, been all over the world preaching this gospel. Yes, Mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Because I know there's some way that people are going to go after they die. And this is the right time to accept Jesus. Because very soon the Lord can take you and you need to be ready. I remember the same year there was an incident uh, back home a young girl died around 5 p.m. and I, I remember I was studying at school and I came home around I my Saka Saka 
Il faut me faire. 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 Il faut me Tu bandar aku phone ni ramu orang macam kata, tu tu rumah kau minat tu sihka, tu bawa sihka bana bawa orang macam tu tangga guna mata. Getting home, our dining room was full of people. They were crying and they were holding that little girl. I remember they 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 were holding that little girl that I entered and my mom told me that there is a girl there. She died about three hours ago and they said. We can't go to the hospital or anywhere before the young man of God comes. I remember putting my hands upon the lady. Siyo ndaka wana ukubwa mwari. Baba sikutora mwana. Kwa sikutanga kuna mata waka mata mwana. Kwa chukumera kuna mwari. Kuti mwana wea wea upenu waki mtukiri makari. Kwa patatanga kuna mata. Kwa patatanga kuna mata. Kwa chukumera kuna mata. Kwa chukumera kuna mata. Kwa chukumera kuna mata. The time I was crying when a tear dropped by that dead little girl. Do pa kaso di bengin patuo pai tato pere wa tato gumiro. She rose from the dead, and that was the testimony that made my ministry to have impact in a place called Korobra. We want to pray for the nation of Zimbabwe. I started a ministry, I launched the ministry in 2016 May, but as of serving God, from the time I was in, around 2009, I started preaching, but as for ministry of the church, I launched it in 2016. <laughs> As I grew up, uh, I was brought up from a very spiritual family. We were going to a church ministry called uh, River of Mercy Assemblies. Pastor, 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 pastor. Why? Because even if when he was growing up, he was just a man of prayer. You'd go up in the mountain, we have, a, we have an, a nearest mountain nearby. You'd go up there and pray all the times. You would read Bibles, you'd preach to people. And um, I remember this other day when we went to town, you know, he started preaching. It, it's really confirmed that really he's a man of God. My commission is to reach out to the nations of the world and preach Jesus the healer, the deliverer and the savior. And as I'm ministering the word of God all over the world, the Lord will perform miracles, signs and wonders. So my commission is to go out into the world, minister to people about the good goodness and the power in the name of Jesus. As I'm doing so, the Lord is healing them. The Lord is setting them free from all sicknesses, bondages, and afflictions of the devil. Would 
Takanga to poor Professor Saga is Mara Kuzadisa, but it proved that I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be a child of Bata Basara. I'm waiting. I'm curious now. Uh, my husband is a man of prayer and miracles. Wow! <laughs> oh, really? Is it for me? Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh my God! This is, oh my God! This is nice. Usually, even when we are home, we always see God, God's hands, and He is a prophet. So far, I've been with him maybe for about seven eight months he is a man of his word if he says something even if he prophesies something it will always come to pass listen the duty of us men of god is not to lead you to us, but it's to lead you to the Jesus behind us. A lot of us, we have seen men of God, we have seen miracles, but we have failed to encounter the miracle worker. We have seen healings, but yet missed the healer. So in everything we do, I want you to know that I'm not the healer. There is a healer in me called Jesus Christ. And if you encounter the same Jesus, your life will never be the same again.